as we prepare to honor and to recognize the veterans and also the active duty military persons that we have amongst us today. We just want to say to God be the glory for his provision of sparing their lives and allowing them to serve and to return back home to their families. War, as long as there is life, there's going to be some battles. Uh, by virtue of the fact that we are sinful people, it was not God's design for man to be warriors. But when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden and man took on that sin nature, it changed everything. That's the reason why the Bible says, for all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. And because we live in countries and we live in a world that's full of sinners and we live in a world that we know that there is an enemy, there are going to be wars. There are going to be battles. There are going to be some casualties of war. But we thank God that he has spared those who are present today to come and to be able to receive just a little honor and thank you from those of us who are here today recognizing the great sacrifice and commitment that they have made to serve this country. Let us welcome our veterans. Look at here. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Dr. Wood, members of the clergy, disciples, and especially all veterans. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am excited this morning, and I hope you are too. I am elated, and it is an honor 
to recognize the different branches of the military as we celebrate our veterans and active men and women this morning. As I call out your specific branch, please step out and raise your United States flags. We will start with the Marines. If you would just step out. Raise Army. Coast Guard. Navy. Please accept these flags as our appreciation for the service you provided and the service that you continue to provide as you represent the United States of America. And to the audience, if you would just stand once more as we honor our men and women. Thank you for all that you do. You may be seated. Thank you. If you will follow Sister Brandon, thank you. Come on, let's put our hands together one more time and celebrate our veterans and active duty personnel. God bless you. And may heaven smile upon you. give them a few moments that they may be returned back to their seats. In the New Testament book of Ephesians, chapter 6, beginning 
at verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6, beginning at verse 10. We'll find our scriptural text for today. Today I have chosen to read from the New International Version's reader's version of the Bible. The New International Version, Reader's Version of the Bible. It's the NIV made where you read it easier. In the New International Version, Reader's version of Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 13, we find these words written, Finally, let the Lord make you strong. Depend upon his mighty power. Verse 11, put on all of God's armor then you can stand firm against the devil's evil plans. Verse 12, our fight is not against human beings. It is against the rulers, the authorities, and the powers of this dark world. It is against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly world. And verse 13, so put on all of God's armor. Evil days will come, but you will be able to stand up to anything. And after you have done everything you can, you will be standing. I like that. I like that. I like that. I want to talk with you today from the subject, the believer's war. The believer's war. Today here at New Providence, we celebrate and bestow honor to those men and women who have served and are currently serving in one of the military branches of our government. We want to say thank you especially to our veterans for the sacrifices and commitments that you made in order that we as a nation and as a people may have the rights to the freedoms that we now enjoy. Many of you have personally seen and personally experienced firsthand the ravages of war and must try to daily live with and accept what you are exposed to and what you were required to do while serving in a hostile war environment. It is my prayer today that God will grant you release and relief 
from the demons that pursue you as the result of having to serve in active combat zones. The Merriam-Webster's Collegiate Dictionary 13th edition defines war as a state of open and declared armed hostile conflict between states or nations. It's a state of hostility, conflict, or antagonism. It is a struggle or competition between opposing forces or for a particular end. That's how Webster's defines war. Back in 1970, when I was still a youngster, 10 years old, there was a song that I heard repeatedly played over the airways that helped me better understand the ravages of war. In protest to the Vietnam War, Motown recording artist Edwin Starr recorded a hit song that was written by Barrett Strong and Norman J. Whitfield titled War. Any of y'all remember the lyrics? War. Huh. Yeah. What is it good for? Yeah, yeah, y'all y'all know. Yeah. <laughs> the lyrics went on to say, Oh war I despise, because it means destruction of innocent lives. War means tears to thousands of mothers' eyes when their sons go off to fight and lose their lives. War, it ain't nothing but a heartbreaker. War is a friend only to the undertaker. Oh, war is an enemy to all mankind. The thought of war blows my mind. War has caused unrest within the younger generation Induction, then destruction. Who wants to die? Oh, war has shattered many a young man's dreams, made him disabled, bitter, and mean. Life is much too short and precious to spend fighting wars these days. War can't give life. It can only take it away. Y'all remember that? And they ended by saying, peace, love, understanding, tell me, is there no place for them today? They say we must fight to keep our freedom, but the Lord knows there's got to be, yeah, yeah, a better way. My, my, my brothers and sisters, though life would be much better with the absence of war, one fact that life teaches us is that as long as there are people here on the earth that can be influenced by evil, yep, yep. that wars will remain a constant. From the Garden of Eden, even up to our present day conflict, war has been a physical and a spiritual constant in this thing we call life. Yes, Listen, physically, we are now living in a world that is troubled with war. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The military of the United States is currently deployed in more than 150 countries uh -huh. around the world. 
right now, over 26,000 of our military troops are in active combat zones in Afghanistan and Iraq. President Obama, who serves as Commander-in-Chief of our military, just this past Friday, authorized the Secretary of Defense, Chuck Hagel, to deploy to Iraq up to 1,500 additional U.S. personnel over the next coming months, but sending them there in a non-combat role. How do you send personnel into an active combat zone and expect them to be non-combatant, especially if they are attacked? Somebody say, help our president. Not only is war being raged physically on foreign soils. But even here in America, we are currently at war. In some of our communities, drug wars are taking place. Drug dealers are having shootouts with other drug dealers over turf rights, and innocent blood caught up in the crossfire is being shed. Not only is there war among the dope dealers, but now there are street gangs who are imprisoning whole communities and using violence to intimidate those who would stand up against them. Yes, we are living in a country that is physically troubled with war. Yes, sir. Matter of fact, there are some of us here today who are fighting wars in our own home. Can I talk to y'all? Some of us are in conflict right now with unsaved spouses, and hard-headed, disrespectful children. And sometimes we wonder if there will ever be a time of peace for us. Am I right about it? Uh, war is, is everywhere. There, there's war in the White House. War in the schoolhouse. War in our house. And unfortunately for some, there is war in the church house. Yes, sir, yes, sir. That's, right. That's right. The place that God ordained to be a house of prayer and peace. Yes. For some has now become a place of strife and contention. Yes, but lean over and tell your neighbor, not here. Not here. <laughs> not, here. not in New Providence. Yes, Thank God that we're in a peaceful church. Lord, have mercy. The, the physical war is all around us and affects all mankind. There is another war that those who believe in Jesus Christ are always engaged in. And that is spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is the believer's real war. Spiritual warfare is difficult. The, the Apostle Paul gives us his testimony of his struggles with spiritual warfare. 
You see, in his letter to the Romans, chapter 7, beginning at verse 18, the apostle Paul writes about his bout with spiritual warfare. He says, for I know that good itself does not dwell in me. That is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want to do, Paul says it is no longer I who did it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So he says, so I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in me. Waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. Then Paul says, what a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? I'm glad he didn't stop there. But he said, thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes, the apostle Paul realized that he was daily in a spiritual battle with his flesh. His flesh wanted to go contrary to the law of God. And just like Paul, we must realize that we are constantly at war in the flesh. And not only are we at war in the flesh, believers, but we're at war in the spiritual realm. The apostle Paul wrote to the Christians at Galatia and warned them of some of the weapons of the flesh that they need to look out for. Paul says, now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, strife, jealousy, wrath. Factions, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and the like. My brothers and sisters, since Paul has made us aware of the weapons and the devices of the flesh, the question that we need to contemplate is what strategy or what plan must we deploy that will assure us victory in times of spiritual warfare? Well, in the words of our selected text for today, Paul tells us in verse 10, Finally, let the Lord make you strong. Depend upon his mighty power. The Apostle Paul tells us that when we as believers engage in spiritual warfare, that we first must totally depend upon God. In other words, 
we must recognize that all of our help comes from the Lord. We are never to try to stand in our own might, but only in his might. If we put our total dependence and reliance upon God, Paul says that the Lord will make us strong. I don't know about you, that's shout news to me. Because I recognize that in my flesh, in my own strength, in my own power, using my own ingenuity, I'm weak. And guess what? You weak too. But thank God for the Holy Spirit who we can lean and depend upon, who can make us strong. So, when we are engaged in spiritual warfare, believers, we must depend upon God and we must let the Lord make us strong. Don't you dare think that you can run up and tackle Satan and his enemies on your own. The sons of Sceva Testimony proves that the devil is nobody to play with. Y'all know the sons of Sceva, don't y'all? Then them guys that ran into the house of the, the demon-possessed man and said that uh, we adjure thee in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches that you come out. And the demon looked at him and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? And that spirit jumped on them. And they were officially the first streakers. <laughs> they left the house, clothes torn off. So when we are engaged in spiritual warfare, believers, you and I must totally yeah. depend upon God yeah. and let the Lord yeah. make us strong. Yeah. Secondly, secondly, when we believers engage in spiritual warfare, when we, when we believers are at war, Paul tells us that we also have to put on all of God's armor. <laughs> Put on all of God's armor. He says if we put all of it on, then we will be able to stand firmly against the devil's plans. You know what, Fred? Some of us believers are defeated in battle because we show up to the battlefield half-dressed. We show up with the helmet of salvation, but leave the sword, the spirit at home. <laughs> Half-dressed. Uh, the Bible says that we ought to put on all of God's armor. So I know somebody saying, well, Pastor Wood, what armor does God want me to wear? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, we done already read about it in our responsive reading. But in Ephesians 6, beginning with 
verse 14, God's armor is described. What does God want me to wear? First of all, he wants you to wear the belt of truth. Why truth, brethren? Because Jesus said of himself, I am the way, the truth, <laughs> and the life. No man comes unto the Father except by me. You going to go up against the enemy? You've got to stand with the belt of truth. What else does God want me to wear, Pastor? He, he wants you to put on the breastplate of righteousness. Why righteousness? Because the Bible says none but the righteous shall see God. Why righteousness? The songwriter says I hope. Is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. God wants us to wear the belt of truth, to have on, put on the breastplate of righteousness. And then he says, make sure that your feet are fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Make sure that your feet are fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Why peace? You know why? Because Jesus said, my peace, I leave with you. And then we also understand that he will keep us in perfect peace. If we keep our minds stayed on him. Peace, peace, peace. Got to have the right shoes on your feet. Lord, have mercy. Uh, lest I keep it too long, he says put on all of God's armor. Put on the belt of truth. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Have your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel peace. But then also... Carry with you the shield of faith. Yeah. Why faith? Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. And Paul also tells us that we need to carry the shield of faith because it is the shield of faith that extinguishes the flaming arrows of the evil one. What else, Pastor Wood? Put on the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, but also the helmet of salvation. Why, why salvation? Why have that helmet on? Acts 4.12 tells us salvation is found and no one else. For there's no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. And what is that name? Jesus. And lastly, make sure that you carry with you the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Why the word, Reverend? Because the word is a lamp unto our feet. The word serves as a light unto our path. And then John tells us like this, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace. And truth. So, when we believers engage in spiritual warfare, we're to be totally dependent upon God. We're supposed to put on all of God's armor. 
But then lastly, when the believer engages in spiritual warfare, when we fight the real war, all Paul tells us to do is when we stand totally dependent upon God, when we are fully dressed, all Paul says is watch God work. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Lean up and tell your neighbor, watch God work through you. Verse 13 said, put on all God's armor. Paul says, evil days will come. You keep living if you haven't been in any warfare. Life is going to bring some hard times. Evil days come not only to the unbeliever, but even for the believer. But, ain't that what verse 13 says? Put on all of God's armor. Evil days will come, but you will be able to stand up to anything. If we, Lord have mercy, thank you, Lord. If we totally depend upon God, if we put on all of God's armor, though the evil days and warfare will come, we'll be able to stand up. Stand up to anything. Hold a firm position. Hold a firm posture. We'll be able to stand up through it all. And Paul says, and after you have done everything you can, he said, guess what? You'll still be Standing. I don't know about you, but as a believer, I'm sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of moments of defeat. And you know what? Let me just be transparent. The defeats that I've suffered in my life were my fault. And snatch your halo off the defeats that you've suffered in your life. You can't blame the devil. You can't blame mama, daddy, cousin. But even when we messed up, even when we were hard-headed and stubborn and rebellious, did what we wanted to do, God kept us. Did he keep you? He, 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 he kept us until we got right back to him. And check this out. Some of the stuff that some of us did should have killed us. Yes, Lean over and touch your neighbor and say, you did some stuff. But where the devil intended to kill us, God had mercy upon us and strengthened us. And that's the reason why we're still standing today. On Christ. 
the solid rock I stand. The only way I'm standing is because my feet are placed upon a firm foundation. But I admit there have been times where my feet got weak. There were times clearly on my knees got weakened. There were times that I felt my strength leaving, but that's when the Holy Spirit. When, when I felt like letting go, that's when the Holy Spirit grabbed tighter. I'm so glad that I'm not in this fight by myself. I'm so glad that I serve a God who purposes for my life for me to stand. He, he wants to keep me and keep you from falling. And so when we engage in spiritual warfare, we got to remember it ain't about me. It, it, it ain't about me. It's about him. I, I got to totally depend upon the Lord. And I can depend upon him when I'm dressed right, when, when, I, when I got on what he wants me to wear. And see, if I arm myself with what he wants me to wear, I won't be defeated. After the war, I'll still be standing. Lord, have mercy. Come on. Come on, stand to your feet. All over the church. The believer's war. Our, our fight is not only in the physical, but our main real battle is in the spiritual realm. And believers, we must keep ourselves prayed up. 